Hello, this is my wire, Nixie wireless energy meter. I wanted to make something with Nixie tubes for a while, uh, but trying to avoid the clock. This is an instantaneous power meter. Uh, it shows apparent power, something important that I'll get on to later, uh, and then displays it on the cold cathode Nixie tubes. Um, you might wonder why there's only two Nixie tubes uh, for what is quite a big number. Um, and there's two reasons. One is because they're expensive to buy the Nixie tubes, they're not made anymore. So they're something of a specialist item. Um, and they're also quite power hungry themselves, so they draw about 300 milliamps each at 5 volts. Um, and the irony of a high power energy meter wasn't lost on me or my wallet, so I kept two. Um, I got around it by using these SI digit notations, um, which show whether you're using you know, watts, kilowatts, megawatts, um, I've also got a sign for showing hours. Um, and then also they've got a, a uh, colon indicator on these mixer tubes here, um, which I end up using, so you've got a, one up top and one below. One is a 10 times digit indicator and one is a one times. Um, and they have colons in each one, which enables you to show effectively anything between zero and 100 megawatts. Um, now, 100 megawatts is obviously a huge number, even one megawatt's a massive number for a domestic energy meter. Um, but my thinking behind that was just to have the flexibility and also um, I have a wireless control that allows you to display, uh, change the display from instantaneous reading to um, some total readings. And uh, you know, you might actually hit a megawatt depending on what sum total reading you choose to display. So I'll show the uh, energy meter working with this handy resistive load that I've brought from the kitchen into the hallway, a kettle. Uh, I mentioned it's a resistive load because um, there is a resistive load, the apparent power is the real power, uh, something I can explain a bit later in the video. Um, if you see, it's showing uh, 27, you currently can't see the decimal, but times indicator showing here as well, so 270 uh, watts. If I turn on the kettle, it should spike up with an inrush current um, and then it will settle around 2.8 kilowatts. So this kettle is uh, drawing 2 kilowatts, which is about right for a domestic kettle. Um, so it probably doesn't look any different apart from the K showing up on the display um, because it's just put a digit in, decimal place in, saying 2.8 uh, and then kilowatts. So if we turn it off, it will fall back away to 26 to 27 times 10 watts. Turn it back on again, see it spike up, enables kilowatts. So there's a two second uh, rolling average, it's not quite instantaneous, it shows two seconds just because you don't want it flickering around. So I mentioned that the uh, energy meter is wireless, I brought my laptop into the hallway as well now. Um, and what I've done is I've got an Arduino in there controlling the majority of everything, uh, sampling the current probe from the mains electricity inlet. Um, and then I've also got an ESP8266, which I've configured essentially as a TCP packet transceiver to the serial on the Arduino. Um, now to use it, I've got it set up as a, so the ESP8266 is set up as a TCP server. I um, made a little Python script so I can connect to it. Get a little command prompt. I send it the standard IDEN from the Visa protocol, I think it is. Um, then I get the name of it, version 0.1, still developing it. Uh, I can change the color. So if I send the command uh, color, 7 is actually off. So now we don't have the white backlight. It's a bit nicer. Um, but you can change it to color. I know three, I'm not sure what that is. Blue, electricity blue. Um, other things as well, like the rolling display interval. So the rolling two second display is enough where you can see even LED, LED light bulbs turning on and off, even though they're not uh, apparent, they don't follow the apparent power curve. Um, but you, get, you can see things turning off around the house. Yeah, I can change it to, uh, one hour rolling, 
which isn't actually anything because I've only just turned this one on. Um, haven't had it on for an hour. I can also uh, stream the average data. So I plan on, it's JSON format, so I plan on turning that into a, uh, a graph using a, a Raspberry Pi web server. Um, and I can even, or you can set the calibration value, which is um, when you use a, a current uh, transformer like this um, with the Arduino ADC and um, current sensing resistor, VREF bias, things like that. There's a lot of error developed, so you need to calibrate it. Uh, you can set the calibration value, which is saved to the EEPROM, so it will load it every time you boot it up. Uh, so if you set the calibration and reset it, you normally want to, I can reset it in here as well. And then you can see my reset routine. This is takes a while while it configures itself with the Wi-Fi attaches to the access point. There you go. I kept mentioning the apparent power and real power. That's because the energy meter I designed is not a true reflection of the power that you'd actually be billed for. Um, so the apparent power is the standard power equals voltage times current. Um, I'm sure most of you know from physics. Um, and that's true for resistive load where the voltage is in phase with the current. So if you have a sinusoidal voltage like that, the current will also be sinusoidal and be in phase with that voltage, um, which means you have a constant power, positive power uh, at the same frequency. And if you calculate the RMS value of the voltage and the RMS value of the current, multiply them together, you'll get a nice steady uh, power drawn. The problem is, is that you don't just have resistive loads around, you also have capacitive, inductive, such as motors uh, in a house, you'd have a washing machine, tumble dryer, things like that. Um, and they don't follow that standard uh, in phase waveforms. The uh, AC voltage would be, you know, you'd have a sinusoidal waveform like that, but the current can either be ahead of phase or, or behind um, the phase of the voltage waveform and what that means is that there'll be certain points where you have a negative voltage but positive current which will give you a negative power effectively the thing like a motor will be working like a generator and providing energy back um, and it means that you get a, a, a not the a, a non uh, sinusoidal power and, and it's not positive through, positive throughout the whole cycle so the RMS voltage times the RMS current isn't going to give you the RMS power effectively um, because you've got these spikes um, and you'll even have things like DC power supplies in the house as well, lots of DC power supplies for laptops even the, the LED light bulbs that I come around putting in um, their current waveform can look something like that um, which you need some complex algebra to try and figure out uh, and a basic on the fly energy meter like that isn't going to do um, I could try and make it uh, more resilient to things, inductive loads and capacitive loads, um, by allowing, uh, adding a, a sampled calibrated AC voltage uh, into the system and a phase correction. But uh, given there's quite a lot of error in the rest of the system from the resolution of the ADC, the uh, tolerances of the resistors, the tolerances of the current transformer, I just decided that I, my main design criteria was something that was indicative uh, and looked good, so I was fairly happy. Thank you.